Well, hi everyone. I'm Deb Goodkin, and I'm with the FreeBSD Foundation, and coming from Boulder, Colorado, where we're headquartered. And thank you for attending my talk. I uh, do want to send a big thank you out to the Linux Foundation for um, accepting my talk and including our voice in this um, in this conference. One thing, some just the logistics really quick. Um, I, if you have any questions at the end, uh, I'm gonna try to allow for some time at the end, but uh, this talk, I am cutting it down from an hour talk originally. And so what I was hoping was to leave more time um, on the Slack channel, which you can connect to, it's called Track Wildcard Channel. And, um, and please feel free to uh, submit any questions there. You can also uh, send me questions over Twitter as well as email me. I don't have my email here, but uh, deb at freebsdfoundation.org. So let's get started. Um, first, who am I? I? I do have a technical background. Um, but it's not with operating systems. So I'm letting you know that just because this is this talk is really uh, an overview of FreeBSD, what it is and how the project works. And um, and so I um, so it's not really intended for uh, going into much technical detail of FreeBSD. I've been with the FreeBSD Foundation since 2005. So it's been almost 15 years and um, I refer to myself as a curiositor. I know it's not really a real word, but I am an avid learner. And um, I do spend a lot of time trying to learn about uh, FreeBSD and operating systems in general, uh, just to help me in my job, but also to help advocate for the project. Um, so my goal here is to um, tell you what FreeBSD is, really just give you an overview, uh, tell you how the project works, and why you should contribute or use FreeBSD. So what is FreeBSD? So first, I have to start off with FreeBSD is not a Linux distribution. And I'm telling you this because even though it's 2020 and FreeBSD has been around for a long time, people still think, um, or you know, FreeBSD is a Linux distribution, or they include it in a survey like I'm showing you right here, that um, this came out from opensource.com, which is um, owned and run by uh, Red Hat. And they were doing the survey uh, near the end of last year, and they wanted to find out what your favorite Linux distro was, and they included FreeBSD. And um, <clears throat> so it's, it makes it really confusing. And um, so we're always having to tell people that FreeBSD is in a Linux distro. And, to, and just to get back to this survey really quick, I mean, they had really good intentions and I know that they included it because they know FreeBSD is a popular operating system. And so they just wanted to include it here. But so I was just pointing that out. So uh, FreeBSD is comprised of uh, like three different components. And so on the top right, you have the operating system. So that's what you're actually running on your computer. In the center, we have the, that's um, part of our community. And so uh, the project is made up of thousands of uh, contributors and volunteers who contribute to that operating system. And then on the bottom right is um, it's who I represent, the FreeBSD Foundation. And we're a separate organization, but we are a nonprofit. And I'll talk about us in a little bit. So FreeBSD is one of the oldest, largest, and most successful open source projects in the world. It's a complete operating system. So what does that mean? Uh, when you compare it to Linux, uh, Linux is the kernel. So this is why you have distros out there because then you're integrating the kernel with the other components that make up an operating system. And FreeBSD is the whole operating system. So it includes the kernel, the user land, documentation, tools, utilities, anything that you need to make up an operating system. Uh, there's over 33,000 software packages that you can use. So that allows you to customize uh, your operating system to what you want. So you get to have like a, a GUI or access the internet. 
it's created by thousands of contributors from all around the world. Previously runs on many different platforms. So all the, or you know, most of the popular CPUs out there, it runs on as well as uh, cloud platforms too. And there are tons of millions of deployments out there. So this is my uh, really high level of bridge version of where FreeBSD descended from. So you have uh, Unix that came out of Bell Labs out of AT&T back in 1969. And then uh, Berkeley started working on it um, and doing a lot of research and innovation on it. And then in uh, early 93, um, it branched out into a FreeBSD and NetBSD. Then I have this timeline here that this is also a very shortened version of a timeline that we have on uh, on our website. And you, on the bottom left, you can see the URL that will take you to the timeline. And I'd really encourage you to go look at that because this is really inf you know interesting information about the history of FreeBSD as well as um, the history of Unix. And so you can see on the top right that Unix was developed in 69. And then in 74, uh, Berkeley started modifying and improving it. And then in 92 is when the first unencumbered full operating system was available. And that was called 386 BSD. And then in 93, uh, FreeBSD split off um, and it was formed. And actually on June 19th, 1993, that was when the, um, the name was FreeBSD was chosen. And then in between that time, between 93, 92 and um, in 94, there, there was a lawsuit and, um, and it was brought on by at and And so um, because of that, it just uh, took up the uh, developer's time that who had to deal with that from Berkeley. And so uh, during that period, there wasn't a lot of adoption or, or development. And so it's, it slowed down the progress for, for a little bit of time. Uh, but since then, really, uh, there have been uh, 27 years of innovation and growth. And so I don't know how hard this is to see on your screen. Um, maybe you can zoom in on it. And, and the reason why I show this large uh, flowchart of Unix um, and is because to show you how, like on the right here, in the pink blocks, you have all these corporations who used FreeBSD. In fact, when I was at IBM, uh, we had our own version of Unix and HP and Sun and all these different companies back then were using some of their own variations of FreeBSD, I'm sorry, of Unix. And, um, and then as you move over to the left, and I zoom in on this here, uh, you see FreeBSD uh, as well as Linux. And the purpose of this chart is to show you really the long history of FreeBSD and how it did descend from the original Unix up at top. On the top, where Linux was created to, um, it was a replacement or like a free version of Minix back in the early 90s. So who uses FreeBSD? Um, these aren't the only companies that use FreeBSD, but I chose these names because they're uh, marquee companies, they're recognizable names that I'm sure most of you are familiar with. And so it shows that there are a lot of large corporations out there that do use FreeBSD. And most likely you use FreeBSD. So if you have an iPhone or an Apple computer, uh, the Mac OS was based originally on BSD and then uh, most of those components were replaced by FreeBSD. And uh, Netflix, if you're watching a movie, all that streaming is being streamed from FreeBSD servers from around the world. If you're playing with a Sony PlayStation, that is also FreeBSD based. So why should you use FreeBSD? Uh, I mean, when I think about it or when people ask me about it, community is, is my first thought and, and answer. And, and the reason why is because it really is a, a welcoming and friendly and inclusive community. Um, is it perfect? No, but the thing that I like about the community is not only do they come back with constructive criticism if they're like reviewing your changes or code, um, but they do work on improving. So, um, 
So if there's a problem, then, I mean, you may have a heated discussion, um, but usually it's resolved in, in a positive way. Uh, it's also known for excellent documentation. And so as I learn and I play around with FreeBSD, uh, not only do we have great documentation that comes with the operating system, uh, you can search for uh, help and you will almost always find your answer. Uh, we have uh, modern and good tooling and um, really a, a consistent development and release process that uh, that really has been built on from the original BSD and just only improved on over the years. And like I said before, we support a lot of architectures. And the other thing that stands out really is, is license, is that it is a permissive license. And, um, and so it's what that means is that you can uh, make your changes, you can implement something that is your own IP, your own secret sauce, and you do not have to give that back. Um, though we do find that most companies do give back most of their code, uh, which is awesome. So how does the project work? Um, I just don't mind me. Every so often I'm looking at the time since I want to make sure that we uh, that I cover all the um, you know, the, the points I really want to cover here. Uh, but anyway, so the FreeBSD Foundation is a whole different um, yeah, organization than the project. And so we do not uh, control uh, or run the project. We have a core team, which is really the leadership of FreeBSD. It's, I, I sometimes I think of them as upper managers, they're the, the governance team, and they are elected. And in fact, we just had elections. And so we have a whole new core team and it's starting, uh, I believe uh, this week. And so there's a whole transition going on. Uh, we have a great uh, mentorship model that we follow. And, um, and so when you are new and you're showing interest in your contributing to the project, someone will reach out to you and offer to be a mentor, and uh, that's how you get your commitment, and you can actually uh, commit your changes to the source tree. We have different functional teams that um, make up how um, things are done. Take a, it, they have some of the res different responsibilities of the project, and I'll, I'll cover that in a sec, and, then, um, and it's a very collaborative environment. So this is how I view uh, the organization. Uh, it's not a real org chart. It's um, if it was, all the red boxes on the bottom would go even further over, including all the different teams that I listed on the bottom of the slide. And um, it, it just would have been too messy. So it doesn't mean if you have a red box that you're more important. Um, but what I'm showing here is how uh, sort of on the top level, you have the foundation and then you have the project. So the two separate organizations. And then you have that core team that I just talked about. And, um, and so they help provide guidance and, and leadership to the project. And then you have these functional teams which have all these different responsibilities to um, support FreeBSD. And the nice thing about having these functional teams is it allows people who are interested in contributing to the project uh, to participate in one with either they have the skills and experience to contribute, or maybe they want to gain those skills and experience. And so they could participate in, um, in one of these functional teams, uh, but also it's not required. So it's just something that's available to help. And this lists what the responsibilities are of the core team. And, um, and so you don't have one person who's who has the final say or who's actually in charge of the project. And just so you know, you can access all these slides because I'm not going to be able to cover all of them during this talk. And, um, and so you can spend a little more time uh, looking into some of these areas. Uh, I am highlighting the age distribution of the contributors or the committers just to show you that we uh, do have quite a few young people who are uh, continuing to join the project and to contribute, as well as um, on the older side too. And um, and what's great about this is that having these people, the well, so the older people actually most of them have been on the project since the beginning, which I think is awesome 
because they're still involved, they're still contributing, and they're available and they want to help. And so they're there to help bring up these newer people um, and, and teach them, and, uh, and they're very approachable. And then you have a lot of people in the middle, and so you have, so it really shows the sustainability of the project as well as the growth and, um, and keeping the knowledge to within the project or sharing that knowledge. Uh, the release, I'll, I'll just go over this really quickly. Uh, we have uh, two different branches. One's the current, this is at the bottom, uh, current and stable, current's all, any of your changes that you make, and then stable is the stable branch, um, or anything that has been changed, as long as it's been in, tested and improved, then it can move into the stable branch. Um, one thing about uh, FreeBSD is we really follow that principle of least astonishment. So what it means is, is don't make changes just to make changes. Uh, if, um, yeah, so, so don't break things that already work, but it doesn't mean don't make changes. We're still very innovative, but uh, people think through their changes more. They um, might uh, present with their thoughts and ideas to different people in the community and get their input. And so there's more thought into things before uh, changes are actually made. And then we have the two um, uh, different types of releases. We have the major release right now we're looking at coming out with 13.0 mid-year next year and then uh, 12.2, uh, which is coming up shortly. And so it's just sort of a minor versus major releases. And how you contribute to the project. I'll just uh, go through this really quickly. It's basically um, you can contribute writing code, writing documentation, maintaining ports, and advocacy. Many different ways that you can step in really quickly um, to contribute. And I always suggest, even if people uh, have a computer science background um, and they want to get started, even doing documentation is the best way to get started because you have to understand technically how things work, and it's a great way to learn how things work. Uh, here's a list of how or why companies use FreeBSD, and I'd say the main reasons really are the BSD license and, and the CFS support. And uh, where FreeBSD is used and where it stands out, and I'll let you read through this list. And uh, when you look at the kernel features, um, I mean, this is, these are, this is the basic functionality that an operating system needs nowadays. And so, um, so we have that in our operating system. And the same holds with user land. But one thing I would say is that when you look at um, you know, the kernel and the user land tools, is that because it's one, um, you know, one Operating, you know, it's one operating system. You have everything together. Um, it's very coherent, and you have one team that is working on this together. And so, um, and so, the whole effort of putting this operating system together is—it's definitely a collaborative effort. But you have like uh, when you do testing, the testing is done, um, you know, by the same group of people across the whole operating system. So you don't have different pieces that are coming from different areas and um, trying to mesh it together. It's a very you know, coherent system. Um, other features of FreeBSD uh, from the ZFS, we're actually, the foundation's actually funding a few ZFS projects currently. Uh, the D-Trace for uh, you know, like real-time debugging and performance analysis. Jails, we uh, developed the first um, you know, containers back in early 2000, and, and jails are used a lot for containerization. Beehive, we have our own hypervisor, uh, the network stack, or um, you know, the TCP IP uh, was developed originally in BSD and improved on in FreeBSD, and it's still being used, and it's used in um, a lot of different operating systems out there right now. And then Capsicum, which is out of University of Cambridge, they're doing a lot of work with this in security right now. The foundation, um, it's, we're here in Boulder, Colorado. We're a nonprofit. Uh, one thing I want to point out is we are classified as a 501c3, 
and which means that we're a public charity and we're for the public good. So our whole purpose is to support the FreeBSD project. And uh, comparing to um, other types of foundations, which usually are 501c6s, which what that means is that they're still a nonprofit, but they're a trade association. And so that means they're focused on commercial users and companies out there. And so a good example of that would be the Linux Foundation. And so, um, so that's how we differ. Uh, we're 100% funded by donations, and really our purpose is to step in and help guide the project as well as to fill out critical needs. So I have this slide because a lot of times I give a talk like this at lin more Linux-oriented conferences, which I consider this one to be. And, um, and so really, it's I'm not trying to say we should code together because it's you know, different operating systems. But I think that it really helps if you're working on operating system to, to understand others. And uh, because you learn, you learn pros and cons. And so if you, uh, we all have successes and failures. And so you learn from each. And, um, and, so, um, and, and so it just, it only makes you better at what you do. We have different coding uh, philosophies and methodologies, and so it's great to understand both and why you might like one over the other. And um, with our, our smaller code base, I mean, we have like in our kernel, we have, I haven't checked recently, but maybe 5 million lines of code versus Linux is at about 26 million lines of code, and this is just the kernel. Um, because we're a smaller code base, it allows you to have, it's a great reference for actually learning about operating systems. And then I include this quote at the bottom that I had read from this one guy. And I think that this is true. It just makes you better at what, um, you know, what you're doing with the operating system. So why should you contribute to FreeBSD? Uh, I mean, really to be a community. So if you are looking for a new project to, uh, contribute to FreeBSD is great because first our strong mentoring culture as well as just the community and being inclusive and welcoming. It's uh, like I was pointing out before, it, the operating system is a great way to learn uh, systems programming and just to study operating systems. And because we're a smaller project, um, the size of it allows you to make notable contributions. And so you can uh, start contributing in an area and be recognized for that. And uh, when I was talking about sort of on that uh, age graph that I showed earlier, um, a lot of those people are notable BSD and FreeBSD founders, and they're very approachable, and they actually and they do want to help. So why use FreeBSD on your desktop? Um, so one thing I'll point out, I mean, so I've listed, these are all the reasons that I see and I hear from people that use it on their desktop. And one thing that I do want to point out is that um, one thing that we, the foundation has taken up is, um, you know, we recognize this. A lot of times it's, diff it's difficult to get FreeBSD working on your system. It may be really old or it may be very new hardware. And so we're working on making sure that uh, FreeBSD does work on um, you know, a lot of the hardware, especially the newer hardware out there. But I did list um, these distributions. I call them distributions. They're not really distributions out there um, from free, that are based on FreeBSD that if you want to try one, um, I, I might try Ghost or Midnight. They're all great. Um, Fury is a newer one, so I'm just not familiar with it. And um, so anyway, I would suggest trying that. I know I'm running out of time, so I'm going to try to finish up here. But what I would suggest is just jump in and get your hands dirty. And the easiest way is to run it on a, on a cloud, on a virtual machine, um, you know, so you're not installing on bare metal at first. But you can do that, too. I actually have a system here. So um, this is my list of resources. I will, um, I'm going to actually make this available later, but you also have access to the, um, uh, the slides so you can see that. And um, but I would really suggest just reading um, the FreeBSD handbook if you're interested and looking more into uh, FreeBSD. And I, I do see that I'm almost out of time and I do have some questions here. So because 
I'm not going to have. Um, OK, I'm not sure if I'm still alive or not. Um, but anyway, since I won't have time to answer them here, please go to the channel, that Slack channel that I mentioned, the wild card one. And um, and I will be happy to answer them there. And I'll try to actually tweet them to you so more people have access to that. So um, I want to thank you for um, attending this talk. And I look forward to seeing what you're going to do with FreeBSD in the future. So thank you.